So the first equation that we're going to look at, let's say we have d squared x, or I should say second derivative of t, the second derivative of x with respect to time, minus 5 times t times x equals t times dx dt uh, minus 25. And the question that you need to ask yourself is, is this linear or nonlinear? And if it's linear, we're going to further ask ourselves, is it homogeneous or is it not? So you go back to your definition and a lot of people stare at this and are like, I have no idea. Well, what you need to do is try to manipulate this and pull it into the form that I've written here on the board. That's really the only way to do it. So here I have a derivative. And in my definition, all my derivatives are on one side of the equal sign. So let me pull this derivative over here, right? So what I'm going to do when I do that is d uh, second derivative of x with respect to time minus t dx dt, just pulling this guy over with a minus sign. This guy stays the same, 5 times t times x. And I'm going to leave for now the negative 25 over on the right-hand side. Now look at this and tell yourself and ask yourself, is this linear or nonlinear? Well, let's look at our definition. We have nth derivative here. We have a second derivative here. The function of time in front of this guy, which is this guy right here, this a n of t, is just simply 1. Don't forget that a constant is really is a function of time. It's just constant. So you get a 1 here. So this part so far makes sense. The next term, I have dx dt, and I have uh, a function of time, a function of my independent variable right in front, which follows in line with how it would go. You know, second, uh, second derivative, first derivative, and so on. Here's the first derivative. Here's my function of time. So it totally matches up there. The next term has a plain x by itself, uh, which is what we have here. You're allowed to have a function of time in front of this x. Well, 5t is a function of time. So I have satisfied everything on the left-hand side. I have second derivative, first derivative, no derivative. Each one of them has a function of time in front, which totally matches everything here. On the right-hand side of the, of the equal sign, do I have e of t, which is just another function of time, my forcing function. On the right-hand side of the equal sign, I have negative 25, which is a function of time. So that trips people up sometimes. You look at constants, you're like, well, that's not a function of time. Well, don't forget that any constant really is a function of time. It just doesn't change. So this is my forcing function. If this, if this circuit represented, let's say, you know, an electric circuit, if this differential equation represented an electric circuit, this E of t might be the voltage. Maybe I have a 25 volt battery, you know, hooked up backwards or something, so it's negative, uh, hooked up to my circuit, a constant 25 volts. Or maybe it's 25 amps going through the circuit as my, sort of my forcing function. So that's what that is over there. So this guy's linear, is sort of the bottom line, because it matches up, so it's a linear. Right? It's linear. Now, next thing we want to ask is, is it homogeneous or is it non-homogeneous? Well, homogeneous means the forcing function e of t on the right-hand side is 0. Clearly, it's not 0, so it's non-homogeneous. Okay? So you just need to think about it a little bit and move these guys over and, uh, you know, make some progress. Okay, the next thing is... What if I have dx dt, I'm going to wrap it in parentheses, let's square it, minus 2 times t squared. And that's equal to 0. Now let's ask ourselves this. Is this linear or nonlinear? Uh, and if it, is, if it is linear, is it homogeneous or not? Well, let me look at this guy. Let's take a look at this. I have dx dt squared. Let me look over here. Does this match what I have on the board? It doesn't match. Because what I have over here, I have an nth order derivative with a function of time in the front. Here I have a first derivative that's squared. That is completely different than the second derivative uh, here. So this, this is set up to be you know, no derivative, first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, fourth derivative, however many you have up to nth derivatives. Nowhere in here does it tell you that you can wrap parentheses around a derivative and square it. That's totally changing it. I mean, I, I take my derivative and I square it. I might as well put a logarithm out here and wrap it up in a logarithm. That's nonlinear also. So this, just by the fact that I have a derivative squared like that, is uh, nonlinear. So that was really easy to identify. Once you get to the fact that it's nonlinear, it makes no sense to talk about homogeneous or non-homogeneous 
Uh, you might think, well, it's homogeneous, and I guess it kind of is, but the, the trump card is nonlinear equation. If it's nonlinear, none of these solution techniques that we're going to study in this, really in this part of, of studying differential equations are going to apply. That's why we're learning how to classify them, because they really all have to be linear to follow the techniques laid out here. You get to nonlinear equations like this, and they just become really, really difficult to do anything with. All right, next problem, let's say, what if we had second derivative of x with respect to time is equal to negative x times dx dt? And is this linear, is it nonlinear, et cetera, et cetera, is what we're trying to figure out. Uh, well, just like before, my advice is if you have derivatives on both sides, pull, pull them over uh, to one side of the equation. So let's do that here. So I have the second derivative here, dx d squared x dt squared, we'll move this guy over, plus x dx dt, and it's going to now equal zero because I've moved it over. So we're going to go down the line and, and, and look at it. Here I have a second derivative that matches up with what I'm allowed to have here. The constant, or the function of time in front is just a constant uh, right here. So I'm set. Now the second term is the first derivative. Here I have a first derivative, and here you have a function of time here. You might think that this is linear. Right, because I have a nice, you know, second derivative, first derivative, zero. So you might think it's a homogeneous linear equation. The problem is this x out here. Notice my definition. You can have a function of time, which is a function of your independent variable, which is time, the way I'm writing it on the on the board here. So because I have x here, this this is not just a random old variable. This is the x of t that I'm trying to find, right? So nowhere in my definition is that allowed. I have, I have nth derivative function of time, first derivative function of time, no derivative function of time. Um, but nowhere is it allowed that I have a first derivative with the function I'm solving for out front. I can have functions of time out in front of the derivatives is really what I'm trying to say. So that kills it right there. There's nothing else to do. There's nothing else to look at. Yeah, it might have a zero, it might look like it's homogeneous, but it absolutely makes no difference. It's nonlinear which basically means for the purposes of, of this course is that using the solution techniques that we're going to develop here over the next several sections aren't going to do anything. They're not going to be uh, used.